Okay, we finally arrive at this behemoth. Super Castlevania 4 is without a shred of a doubt one of the greatest games in the Castlevania series. And easily one of my top 5 SNES games of all time. Even way back in 1991 when the game was released, it was taking top scores in all the video game publications of the time, and it deserved them all. The title opening says a tremendous amount of atmosphere, with creepy crawlies skittering about in some dank dungeon somewhere. It sets the tone that completely draws you into the world of Castlevania, more so than any of the original three NES releases. Afterwards, you're shown the story sequence, which again creates such a foreboding atmosphere and a sense of impending doom at the challenges Simon Belmont will face soon. You're told that over the centuries, members of the Belmont family have been very successful in defeating Dracula and his minions. Once every hundred years, Dracula rises to great havoc in the peaceful countryside, and it's up to you and your trusty whip to take the fucker down. Unbeknownst to me up until recently, Super Castlevania IV is actually a remake of the original Castlevania from 1987. Many fans say this, but I could never see the connection. It's a Castlevania game, true. You play as Simon Belmont, true. And while the game gets supersized in the visual and audio department thanks to the power of the Super Nintendo, I've always thought of and treated Super Castlevania IV as its own standalone game. One of only two releases on the SNES in the Castlevania universe, Super Castlevania is the only game in the original 2D series that begins outside the castle itself. In fact, the first three to four stages are all about you making your way towards the castle trudging through marshes, dilapidated ruins, underground caverns, and flooded temples. You don't actually reach the castle entrance until stage 5. And after that, are even more varied environments to kick ass in, including a remake of the classic clockwork stage. The designers really made a prime example of how great SNES games could look with this release. There are all sorts of little details, from a skull-shaped rock in the background, to skulls in the walls that turn to watch as you walk past, to sparkly jewels and gold flung around as you hit piles of them. Sprite animations are fantastic and there are even some great examples of Mode 7 usage as well. The environments are moody, and each one having its own distinct setting. The difficulty isn't too great, as this is one of the few Castlevanias that can be beaten in one sitting without dying. I was always kind of disappointed that Konami never made a sequel to this game, or another Castlevania for the SNES. No, Dracula X doesn't count as that's just a port of the PC Engine game and wasn't developed with the SNES in mind. In this game, Simon has been given a lot of different moves and abilities. First, and most widely known, is that you're able to whip in all eight directions in this game, which makes you a total badass killing machine. For a knock against Konami, this feature was never added back into any Castlevania game since for some reason. You also are able to jump onto stairs, there's no knockback when you get hit by an enemy, and you can moonwalk up and down stairs. Added to the game are small rings, looking almost like door knockers, that you can now whip onto and swing around like Tarzan. These come in handy in later stages, especially the rotating room in stage 4. Pulling the whip button and moving the d-pad around allows you to fling your whip around like a pussy although it sometimes is helpful for taking out enemies below you or pesky flying enemies like ghosts. Lastly, instead of the usual pressing up plus the attack button to fire your special weapon, that duty has now been relegated to the L and R buttons, allowing you even more freedom of multiple attacks and rapid fire. You go up against a huge arsenal of Dracula's minions, as well as bosses that sometimes can be quite tricky. From Medusa to the Armored Knight, Gaiden to Death. Most have simple patterns, but most of the time it comes down to your reflexes and how aggressive you are at trying to win. 
I'll admit, it took me about seven or eight tries to beat Dracula at the end. Mainly because I was trying to beat him as fast as possible and kept screwing up. Mostly during the second phase of the fight with the flame pillars. With one final strike, you defeat the Dark One once again, and peace is restored to the countryside. Speaking of the ending, this game has one of the best, if not the best, ending music of any SNES game, in my opinion. It perfectly captures the long battle you've just been through, and mainly reminds me of my time growing up, staying up past midnight, sitting with friends in the dark, trying to get to the end. The entire soundtrack of this game is phenomenal, from Simon's theme to the treasure room. It also features a piece of music that directly inspired me to learn to play the piano. That piece of music? The Waterfalls. This stage is my favorite in the game, mainly because of the music combined with the stage design itself is so moving and completely draws you in. Super Castlevania 4 was probably my most rented game growing up, and even after I beat it, I'd still rent it over and over just to play through it again. It received very high scores in all the gaming publications when it was released, and I remember reading through every issue I could find that gave more information about the game that I didn't already know. It's been over 20 years since Super Castlevania 4 came out, and even though it's available on the Wii's Virtual Console nowadays, it'll always hold a special place from the old 16-bit Super Nintendo days. Definitely one of the greats. Thanks for watching, and you are required to play this game. Check it out.